How does your body move? Muscle contraction. But wait! How do your muscles contract? This process can be explained by the sliding filament theory. Before we talk about the sliding filament theory, let's go into the structure of a muscle. The muscles are made up of muscle fibers. Within the muscle fibers are myofibrils, and within the myofibrils are myofilaments. The two types of myofilaments are actin and myosin. The actin strands have two proteins, tropomyosin and troponin. When you need to move, an electrical impulse will be sent from the nerves into the sarcomeres. The sarcomeres are surrounded by the sarcoplasmic reticulum and calcium pumps. The impulse signals the calcium pumps to release calcium ions into the sarcomere. Calcium ions are charged particles that will bind to troponin and it will move them leaving an exposed area for myosin to grab for the start of muscle contraction. When the binding sites are revealed, the myosin heads extend and link to the actin. In order for the sliding motion to take place, the myosin heads need ATP to begin the actin filament, which will supply energy for the muscle contraction. ADP attaches to myosin heads when the muscles are resting. The myosin head will release pent up energy to start moving the actin, which will start the muscle contraction. What is ATP? ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate, which is made up of adenine, a 5-carbon sugar called ribose, and 3 phosphate groups. The bond between the second and third phosphates are very weak. When the bond is broken, energy is released, creating the molecule ADP. ADP, adenosine diphosphate, only has two phosphate groups. As explained earlier, ATP is important in the process of muscle contraction, as it is the energy source for many types of cells which can be produced by aerobic and anaerobic respiration. Aerobic respiration takes the glucose, a sugar that we get from our foods, and oxygen, and turns it into an average of 29 to 30 ATP molecules. Aerobic respiration is very slow, but very efficient, and is used during exercises that take longer than a few seconds to complete. Anaerobic respiration is the body's backup plan for energy. Like aerobic respiration, this process uses glucose to make ATP, but doesn't require oxygen. Our body doesn't use it as much as aerobic respiration because it is much less efficient and produces a less wanted byproduct. The body uses anaerobic respiration when doing quick exercises or when the body runs out of oxygen to feel aerobic respiration. Lactic acid is a byproduct of anaerobic respiration. When it builds up, the blood's pH drops, causing the muscle to feel fatigue and the burning sensation in your legs after an intense exercise. pH is a measure of acidity. The lower the pH, the higher the acidity. For every glucose, only two ATP molecules are made, and lactic acid is produced. When the muscle cells relax after its contraction, the calcium ions disperse back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum through the calcium pumps. Then the muscles will begin collecting calcium ions until the nerves send signals for the muscles to contract. Then an ATP molecule will attach itself to the head of the myosin to power up muscle relaxation. The troponin and tropomyosin are then returned to their resting area until the next contraction. And that is how the sliding filament theory works and how your body is able to move.